Hello, hello. Welcome to another day of programming. Voila. Uh, actually, actually, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee first because I haven't drank any yet. That's too hot. I'm gonna burn my mouth. At least I've learned my older years not to drink coffee too fast. Um, you muck. Uh, last time we were working on doing like reconnection code for all of the networking. Then I realized that there's some like weird synchronization stuff that could also happen. I was like drawing it out yesterday. Like if the, um, what did I write down? Let me get my piece of paper. Hear that? Oh, those are my notes. Um, hmm. Yeah, like if the, oh, oh, if this, oh, hey, morning, morning TLK, morning JJ. But I realized if the server restarted and I and the proxy was still up and I had a lot of connections already, all of those would have to be re-logged in. And also sometimes the ser and if the proxy goes down, I need to log all of the users out on the server. Those are kind of the two cases that I, I still need to handle, but. How are you guys doing today? You guys having a good one? Good, very. Nice. I love to hear it. Also, JJ, I saw your uh, your new website. It's looking good. You should look into using, uh, if you don't want to deal with CSS immediately, they're a little bit like, mm, they manage a lot of stuff for you. So it makes it hard to like edit it sometimes, but uh, you can look at like Pico CSS for just styling things initially. <laughs> I think uh, Jomi shared it with me one time. It seemed nice though. But yesterday I was working on this a little bit. And I added this a little, a little connected sign that pops up, and that way, if that way, if the proxy goes down, it switches to disconnected. And then when the uh, we fix, we drew out this part or, or before, but it wasn't finished. I finished it last night. Um, I restarted the proxy, and then he eventually reconnected. One weird thing that happens though is uh, like um, the old people are still there. I think they'll eventually log out though. Let's see. Those are the old logins. Because when you log in a new time, like the proxy goes down, you reconnect. You have to like, how I have it set up now, I just pick a random ID and give it to that user. They don't like actually send in their login credentials, you know? I could give them a UI, UUID though. That way they have to like restart their, um, and then every time they restart their game, they get a new UUID. And then the UUID just represents them sending a password. Let's do that actually. That's probably more similar to what I want rather than having auto incrementing. I keep getting excited whenever I hear UID or UUID. I don't know why. Yeah. I actually might switch it to be a UUID. Because how, how it'll eventually work, I don't think the timeout's working for these for some reason. I don't know why, though. I thought for sure they would lo log out. I also need to clean up my login because, like, they really need to have an update camera printout statement. Come on. Okay, UUIDs are exciting stuff, so I don't blame you. And when I, log when I exit this, it logs out cleanly now. Mr. Mohawk, man. There's still a few bugs with the networking and synchronization of things, but uh, we'll get through it, you know? What was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about the password thing. Like, right now what I do is when someone logs into the proxy, I just give them a random ID. I guess what should happen, what should happen is they should log in with their credentials. They would get a token, right? Once they log in with the login server, they get a token. They send that token in their WebSocket request. I validate that token and say like, oh, you're this user. You're this user. And you're gonna be this user ID. Um, hmm. And then I use that user ID for the entire game. Hello, Dracula. Good morning for you. I know that confuses you when I say that because, but what I was thinking is that since you're a vampire, you have to wake up when nighttime's starting. So you wake up in the evening and it's evening for your time zone. So oh, how about that logic? Web sockets break my head. Why is that? They're like, uh, they're just like TCP sockets. They're very similar. There's a few differences that I know of. There might be other ones, but those are the ones that I, I know a few. Like I think they send um they send zero byte keep alive messages, which is something that if you send a zero byte message over TCP, that's how you close the socket. But on web sockets, it's like okay. I also think they do some message framing maybe for you. So when I switch because I'm using web sockets for everything right now, when I switch over to TCP, I think I need to add my own framing. I have, I have to do in there somewhere about it. I'm sure. Yeah, the, that blow your mind. It's kind of some it's some high level thinking. I have PTSD. Working with WebSockets and Express. Yeah, I've never used Express before. I have refused to work with it ever since. Yeah. I don't know. Why would you use a WebSocket for a um, for something like a web framework? I'm doing well. I'm still a little sleepy, but I'm overall, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. I added this little connect, connect to disconnect thing. Check this out. I don't know if you saw it. So when I close, if the proxy dies, then it disconnects, but then the proxy restarts, reconnects. My goal is to have it so that I can make a change in one thing, like either the server, proxy, or client, and then I can restart just one of them, and then have, have everything just continue to work properly. Design stuff never clicks for me? Yeah, that's all right. I don't think I need, I don't think I want to give them a, 
I don't think I should give them a UUID to send to the, with the login request. Because how I think it's going to work is they're going to log in, they're going to get a token back, they're going to send the token over, I'm going to validate the token as that user. The problem is when I'm randomly, yeah, I'm going to validate the token as a user and then I'm going to turn that user ID back to them and say, hey, you're this user ID. The problem though is that uh, they know what ID they are. I guess I could just give have them pick a random UN64 and then they just they just pick a random UN64 for the same... Uh, so what's happening right now, like what should be happening is he should log in. He should detect it's the same. He's trying to log in as the same user. I think I'm going to do that. They're going to try to log in with the same uh, UN64. And I'm just going to allow all logins. That's what I should do. Science never clicks for me. Dracula doesn't like my colors. Yeah, I mean, they're a little bit bright. Uh, yeah, picking colors is really, really hard. So what, what I've done for at least game design stuff is I'll use a, uh, I'll use a palette. And then I'll just use those colors from that. So I'd find a palette and then pick the colors based off of that palette. And then if you want to like, like you'd be surprised at how, like I saw, I read that you said you wanted to do, like you picked that orange because that was the orange of like uh, the thing. But it's um, like, you need to have very, uh, like very neutral colors for most of the content. And then you want to have accents, I think. And the accents you can make bright and fun. But if you make the, all the content bright, it's going to be like uh, just overwhelming. On page OAuth? Yeah, eventually I'm going to do OAuth. And then the, that's how they get the token. That's what I was thinking. I have them like OAuth with like the, they're like, I don't know, like Google or something like that. I feel like everyone's got a Gmail. So that's probably an easy way to do it. I wasn't planning to do user accounts. I mean, WebSockets in my web app for server event stuff without set interval stuff, I think. Yeah, the, the nice thing is about, the nice thing about doing a web, about what doing a WebSocket is that, uh, yeah, everyone, I'll, I'll do a Facebook OAuth. It's funny because a lot of these websites have OAuth now. Like you can use you can use your OAuth account for like oh GitHub has one too. I mean, I'll do a GitHub one. I feel like that excludes a lot of people though. The thing is, is if you're on YouTube, you probably have like a Google account, you know. And I, I assume most of the people that are gonna get on this are just gonna be people like uh, you guys and stuff. So I assume you all have accounts if you're already messaging in it. Discord OAuth maybe because managing user logins is kind of painful. <clears throat> I guess I could do something like Firebase something that handles accounts or maybe i'll try out pocket base i only do discord to oauth because there are other platforms confuse me confuse me i haven't tried to do github yeah oauth in general kind of confuses me to be honest um what was i gonna say oh uh i think the main benefit of using web sockets is just that um you don't they don't have to make a new http request every single time and they don't have to make a new tcp renegotiation for that request every single time though i think that nowadays in the modern http they kind of uh keep open the tcp socket and try to do multiple requests on it so they don't have to renegotiate that every single time so what websockets does is it just keeps it makes one request a t http http request then it uh keeps that socket open and then you just send then you send direct binary messages over that socket so the, the uh, HTTP request needs to be like upgraded to a WebSocket. Yeah, WebSockets is a lot faster. It's still a TCP socket. It's not a UDP socket. So it's a little bit, there's a little bit of a latency issues from that. Um, but overall, it's like, it, it'll be good enough for what, what, we're, what we're trying to do. The other thing is I've made a lot of assumptions that my network is reliable, which TCP guarantees gives you a reliable network or UDP wouldn't. So find a color palette and stick with it. What's a good site for palettes? Honestly, I would use like Pico CSS. I would just use their palette to start out with. Like if all, if most, because most of you're trying to do is not style it. You're trying to, right? I guess like eventually you want to style it. Um, so you can kind of style it along the way. But I would, I would try to start with something that already gives you kind of what your behavior you want is. So I'd look at Pico CSS. Go me shared that with me once. All right, something at like UDP sockets with HTTP3. Really? Hey, Mountain Shark. Welcome. Welcome back. I would love that. That would actually be super cool. There's a lot of these um, lower latency, reliable messaging protocols, um, like KCP and Quick. Yeah. Hmm. Some say the web industry's hunger for more speed and lower latency is only matched by Google Chrome's hunger for more RAM. Wow. I don't think anybody's ever said that. But I like, I like what he, he's trying to make like a fun intro. So I like that. I like that, but I'm pretty sure no one's ever said that. Because uh, I don't think the web, uh, I don't know, not to like... Uh, Crap on web developers, but some of the web stuff's really freaking slow and super bloated, but whatever. Um, what is it though? Okay, I know what that is. Web browser support, library support. Quick is over, is Quick over TCP? Or it's, uh, oh, can you use Quick over, wait, what? Oh, Quick's just a like, um, includes the unreliable. 
It must be TCP. I don't know. What is Quick? Quick UDP internet connections. Can you use Quick? This is by establishing a number of multiplex connections between two endpoints using UDP, independently, and hence independent of packet losses involving other streams. In contrast, yeah, this is the biggest problem about TCP. Is that if you have, if you, because like a game's gonna queue up a lot of updates, you know, and if there is some latency that causes the one at the top of the queue, so I'm like inventing like a thing on my screen. I wish I could just like, it would be, maybe I should just have some drawing thing always open. What did I, what's it, external? Yeah. But you have this queue of messages you're trying to send. Oh God. I'm sorry, guys. And like you're pushing to the end of this queue, right? And like, let's say you filled it up like this, and then this one's sending, but this one's lagging. Well, the TCP forces forces the next one that gets sent to be this one. So it's gonna wait. Well, it's it's, it's gonna send multiple, but it's gonna block until the, until this finishes. So like if so like if you have a bunch of game updates, the re most relevant game update is this one, right? Like that's the relevant one, but it's way back in your list because there's lagging on this one. So the next one you want to send is this. <laughs> Hearing drawing makes me think of the T3 Theo guy. How does he draw with his mouse? I need to learn how to use my drawing tablet. Cause I feel like when I when I write with it, it's like uh, I don't know. It always looks weird. It always uh, everything is smaller. But that's like the big problem with TCP. That and like you don't care if things get lost because the next message you send is gonna be the important one. I didn't realize I need to look into this. I didn't realize that I could um, use Quick already. Well, if Quick is already a protocol on UDP, I probably would just use that. I don't think I necessarily need. Uh, I don't think I necessarily need um, a native like a. Uh, the UDP. Holy moly. Okay. Oh, that article was too long. Just like how every application is going to turn into Chrome. Cough, Electron. Yeah. Can I keep a black background and use it as a dark mode? I don't know what you mean. Why, why are you unamused, Dracula? Is that when I said, uh, I hate to talk crap about web developers? Can you guys hear my mouse click? Actually, I'm going to look at OBS and see if my thing spikes. I guess when, I, I guess when I'm talking, it pro you probably hear the clicks, but it doesn't pick it up otherwise. Yeah, I try, I've tried using the drawing tablet before. It's just like, it's so, it's smaller than what I'm drawing to. So like, I feel like I should draw like a big, I don't know. It's just, I wish it had some like automatic straightener or something. How's that? Did you, uh, smoothing? Yeah, that's what I want. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Great ASMR. Yeah, this is turning into an ASMR stream, guys. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. This is what, this is what I always wanted to do. Have you seen <laughs> have you seen those ear things? That's weird. I'm gonna say it. Those ear things are weird. I don't watch ASMR all that much, but sometimes it'll pop up on my Twitch and I'll just like see it. Like, I'll click on it because it looks so weird. And those ear things are weird. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. When I use Paint Tool SAI, it has smoothing and specific levels. Max one was insane. Okay, I'll check that out. Do I have that? No, I don't. I'll look into that one though. Cause I really just want to like draw like uh, block diagrams. Like my block diagrams look pretty look pretty good on paper, but then when I try to draw them on the on the drawing tablet, there's like they're really janky. Oh, it's Windows only. There's this one on on Linux called Krita. I could try I could try switching to that that because that's like an actual drawing program. So that one probably has better um, smoothing than like external. Uh oh, that's kind of interesting. So I have to look into this now. Bounds don't match. This might be a concurrent uh, concurrency bug. Line 88. Yeah, this must be a concurrency bug. Or, oh, I hope it's not. I, it, it has to be a concurrency bug. I need to, make, I need to write this on my to-do list to make this thread safe. I wonder if open tablet driver could do something for you. I'm not familiar with that. I don't know. Uh, I have a Wacom tablet, so I assume I'm using their uh, tablet driver. Oh, it's a user mode tablet driver. Theirs might also be user mode. I don't know. It's like a, I don't know, Wacom something, Wacom. I don't remember what mine's called. I think it's called a Wacom One or something. It was like the cheap one. Oh, it's on the back. 472. Okay, I guess it is supported. Cool. Yeah, KDE has has a has a tablet driver. Where is it? I think it only pops up when I'm plugged in. I'm using uh, external. I, I I assume it's pronounced external, but they don't have a J in there, so external. I think. It's really overall not that bad. It's just like stuff like this happens. I wish that was just, I wish it just straightened that for me. Like everything just feels really like, I don't know. Like I'm trying to draw a line, you know? So like, I don't know. I don't know how people draw like these nice like artworks and like they kind of like sketch it out. I'm just doing it with a mouse, but I don't know. I just need to, I just need to practice it. I need to use my, whenever I have to draw on this, I need to actually use my tablet. 
I'll play around. I'll play around with it later. I'll look into this though. I'm pretty sure this must be a um uh a concurrency bug. So I'm gonna or not a concurrency bug, but like because it's not thread safe and I'm using it in a multiple threads sort of way. Um but let's go ahead and uh go back to this. Could the drawing page be low resolution? It might have been. That's true. I didn't think about that. I might not be able to smooth it if uh there's just not enough pixels to smooth into. I really I think I really just need to like spend some time and like figure out how I want to do it, you know? Because I've seen other people uh have like I don't know what they use though, but I've seen people have like people do who do YouTube videos. Like for example, um what's his name? The guy who does handmade hero. He does some drawing on his stuff and he's got a nice one. I don't know what it is. But I need to look and find out what that is, because that seems like probably what I want. I'll probably I should probably just use whatever he does. On his his might be Windows only, but I just need to find something like that. Anyways, uh, let's do, let's kill everything. Okay. The proxy should be able to start before the server. That's another thing. Let's fix that. I think the reason, the, the uh, proxy, because I'm using Mangos for my networking there, the proxy to server connection, I think it automatically tries to reconnect. But if it fails the first time, it doesn't keep trying. I wonder if there's uh, something in there. Oh, Mangos V3. I'm using, what am I using? Oh, I'm using V3. Never mind. Let's see here. Do proxy, we have server, new socket, pair new socket. This one dials, this one listens. What I should, I wonder if there's some timeout period where, huh, I don't know. I feel like I'm not, I feel like there's an error happening in here, but I'm not handling it properly. Join me, join stream, let's kill everything. Yeah, uh-oh, he's on, he's on to us guys. I mean, uh, let's, uh, let's close everything. Yeah, guys, Jomi's here, let's stop talking about him. Also, welcome, Jomi. Welcome to the stream. You came just in time. I feel like I need to have better uh, abstractions for these things. Like, I kind of just like, oh, I'm going to open a socket. But what I really want is I want to loop and open a socket. I want to loop until I open a socket. I'm just kidding, Jomi. You know we only say good things about you. I, I always recommend people use that Pico CSS thing now that you told me about it. <clears throat> I did like how easy it was to make my si simple about page. Nice, yeah. Yeah, what are you using, JJ? For your, Are you using a framework or... Also, after I send that Node.js OS thing in the Discord, LMAO. I don't know if I saw that one. Oh, Node OS. Let's take a look. Oh, no. Please don't tell me this is what I think it is. Oh, no. Why? Just why? Node OS uses NPM as its primary package manager. Wait, what is... What does this mean, though? It must run in Linux still. The full operating system built on top of the Linux kernel. Okay. So, the, I don't know. The problem I have with calling it an operating system is it's not really an operating system, right? It's a... um. I don't know, it's like a service layer or something like that on top of an OS. Like Android's not an operating system. Android's Linux. Linux is the operating system for Android. Not that this is bad. I think stuff like this is kind of cool. I think Node's too, probably too slow for me to want to use it though. Like this just wraps Linux. <laughs> New achievement lock made unit say oh no two times in a row. Yeah. Imagine what you have to do to get me to say it three times in a row. Pre-compiled binaries. I'll start playing. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to find some really crazy news. It's either it's gonna have to be Java or JavaScript related. I'm just gonna let you know right now. I don't think there's anything else that would make me say oh no three times other than that. Service starter commands. So is there a um? Where did I go to? Building from uh, building from source arch. I just don't understand what this gives me. Like what like what do I get? Hi, I'm a user in its script. I don't know. It's it's interesting. There you need then you use HTTPS, but it is interesting. Do you see Rust OS? No, I didn't. I could see Rust being an OS. <clears throat> Redox? Actually, I might have seen this. I like the sound of that. Oh, there's this other, what was it called, Nanos? Oh, this was interesting. Like, this seems like a very common thing. Like, why am I loading Linux? Why am I loading a Linux build in to just run, like, one program? Like, I don't really need a full Linux most of the time. Like, I really just want to run some program, have access to a, fi to a file system, and uh, networking. So this is like a unikernel, I guess they call it, which is probably just a microkernel for running a single program. Like it probably doesn't have any scheduler, which I think is kind of cool because like I can do this, like if everything's one process, I can just uh, do thread scheduling however I want. They seem to say that it's faster, but th this was, I don't know, I thought this was kind of interesting. <clears throat> like I think for, um, this is probably for running like a container, right? You're not going to like load up your servers with Nanos and like, you know what I mean? You're going to like load up your ser server with Linux, and then you're gonna have like a bunch of containers on it, and then those inside of those you don't want Linux. You just have Nanos because it's a single thread. Hello, Orchids. How's it going? Hello, world. How are you? How are you doing today? 
Microkernel design includes a GUI, Orbital, supports Rust standard library. Like it? MIT license, that's interesting. That's very interesting. I feel like, I feel like OSs typically are um, GPL. Drivers in user space. I don't know if that's good. I don't know. Actually, I don't know enough about OSs to know if that's a good decision or a bad decision. Like, why does Linux do their, do most of their, I guess Linux is trying to make most of their drivers in user space, but originally they were all in kernel space. That causes really big issues, right? Because if someone loads a bad kernel module, it'll crash your system. So you don't want to ever break the kernel space. I can't find a static, good static site generator for documentation. Well, there's like the Rust, there's like those Git, there's like Gitbook and like Rustbook or whatever. You can also just use like a regular blogging platform. Have you seen Make Docs material? It's quite good. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Python IOPG3. Are you programming over there? Are you pro programming in chat? Drivers are files in Linux. I think it's devices in Windows. Yeah, but like the driver, the uh, Linux driver needs to be loaded by in, into the kernel kind of like dynamically. So I think if it crashes, it's going to break the kernel. You're going to get a kernel panic. So I can, I, can, I can see an argument for uh, drivers in user space, I guess. I don't really know, though. Is Ubuntu user space? What do you mean by that? Some of the drivers are certainly not. Like Ubuntu is just a distribution for Linux. So they took the Linux kernel and then they packaged a bunch of packages on top of that. A bunch of packages, a bunch of drivers. So... Uh, so if they package drivers, drivers, those would be kernel space. If they packaged other packages, those might be uh, user space. I feel lazy doing, um, just retrying this dial though. Hmm. Let's see. Well, I almost want to start, I almost want to do this kind of uh, on the side, right? Because I don't want to stop listening. I guess I could listen first. That kind of breaks the ordering because I'd like to be uh, connected before I start listening. I guess there's no point to listen for new connections if, if the uh, socket dialing has, hasn't happened yet. I think the really lazy way of doing this is just to do this. Oops, uh, don't panic here. I don't know, we'll sleep like 10 seconds. Oops, times time dot second. Uh, then we'll continue. And then down here we'll just break. If we get here, then we've successfully, um, what's it called? We've successfully dialed. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to test. Um, yeah, and I run the proxy, failed the dial retrying. And I connect the server. It's gonna retry in five seconds or so. And now we're good, cool. Yeah, Joey, what kind of docs are you trying to generate? Uh, let's see here. That should be good. Okay, so now the proxy will redial. Or the proxy is not going to redial. I think the proxy, because it's uh, dialed once, it tries to reconnect. I don't know if it infinitely tries to reconnect, though. But I'd be okay if it did. Um, oh, if the proxy disconnects, though, one other thing I need to do is I need to... Um, I look at my notes. If the server restarts, I need to reload. Okay, when I, I need to reboot. And then... Uh, oh, just start listening. If the proxy restarts, I need to connect to the server and then listen for clients. I guess those two things already happen. The only last thing is synchronization issues, which is that if the proxy restarts, the server um, needs to log out all of the users on that proxy. Something with dark mode and tabs in code blocks is what I mean. Oh, tabs in code blocks. Gotcha. Um, doesn't, all right, I guess Gitbook might cost, cost money. I haven't really looked into those. I, w I wonder if there's um, like a Hugo theme that does that. I don't know how they would do that, but <laughs> oh no, please no. I could argue has just been saying random things related to code and random late. Yeah, yeah, it's a little weird. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what to say about HTTP. You got you got me on that one. Geometry. We did talk about geometry last time. Crypness, yo. I'm gonna start doing it. All right, Hugo couldn't get it to work. Really? In NFTs or is that NFTs? I was trying to read that as uh, NTFS originally. I think, that, I think you meant to type NFTs, smart contracts. Oh gosh, <laughs> Here we, this is gonna be a long, this is gonna be a long stream, boys. Blockchain. <laughs> oh geez, I can't. I can't wait to see all the uh, buzzwords you guys come up with. <laughs> Spring data, JPA, SQL generation from uh, from function name and interface. That was pretty good. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what JPA is, but have you guys seen the in <laughs> Have you guys seen the intro to uh, Silicon Valley? I wonder if it's on YouTube. Um, Silicon Valley. Uh, hmm. Dang, I can't find it. Oh well. If I find it, I'll put it on Discord. Maybe I'll look after this. I don't want to sit here and uh, search for it for a long time. Prefer just Markdown files with some extra syntax for tabs and stuff. We can't find a working solution. Just make your own. Yep. It's been decided, Jomi. Now you're gonna have to make. You have to build that before you can finish your uh, your console, your game console. That would be a cool project. Oh, Dracula's gonna take the helm. Uh oh. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have a battle of. Uh, we're gonna have a battle. Oops. 
battle of documentation website things. I don't even know. I don't even know what they're called. What's the name for this sort of thing? Markdown documentation tools. Uh, let's see here. We might need to. We might need to walk through the server code again. It's been a while since I mod modified it. Create server systems. That has a oh, server con. I mean, one assumption I can do. Eventually, I need to have multiple server. Wait a second. Oh, because it's a pair, it probably only lets me have one connection at a time. I wonder if this is blocking. Did I close it? No, I didn't. There we go. Listen. Pair. 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 Ah, here we go. Where is listen to find? Oh, it's probably sock. Ah. I hate when I have so many tabs open because I have to stream. It makes it really hard to alt tab between stuff. Pair. All right, let's go here. We'll look at protocol. 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 Pair. No, no. I wanted to go to sock. I don't have a uh, transport TCP. I guess it's all in here then. Oh, socket. There we go. Listen, listen connects the local endpoint to the socket. Remote peers may connect with dial and each and will each be connected to the socket. The acceptor logic runs in a separate go routine. The only error possible is that it's if the address is invalid. Oh, interesting. Why write documentation that spoils the user? If user want to use, then user must read source code. Yeah, I like that logic. That way, think about it. That way, uh, let's say you make a change and you forget to update your documentation. You know what I mean? Now the user's confused. So, oh, look at that. That's a milestone right there. 10 concurrent viewers. Hey, it, I saw it. I saw it hit 10 too. Look at that. Oh, that's nine. That says nine. This said 10 for a second. Go up. Go up. All right. I'll keep an eye on it. Imagine not being able to understand code in 2022. Seriously. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, 10. There you go. It's recorded now. I don't know why this says nine still, but it should be 10. What right, double digits, boys. We're at double digits. Look at Discord. Hmm. Ooh. Oh wow, that's super smoothing. S A I. How do you pronounce that? Sai. I don't know if this has audio. I don't have my headphones in. Oh, this this is what you're talking about. Look at that. Ten. Woohoo! You guys better pump the stock. Have you guys ever seen Coffeezilla? He always says that. If I have to read the source code to use a library, I'd rather just make it myself. Yeah, I honestly, I have the same feelings a lot of times. If it's like, I don't know. And and uh, I don't write a lot of documentation for the libraries that I build too. So like, I get it. But you you really limit the marketability of your code if you don't write documentation. Because it's like a lot of stuff's like, I could do, I could just write it, you know? Because I only need like a small subset of the functionality or something like that most of the time. If it's something really complicated, then I'll try to use a library maybe, but... Oh yeah, CoffeeZilla, Sol Solidity Web 7 by Snoop Dogg. I haven't seen that. That sounds pretty funny though. They just skipped Web 3, 4, 5, and 6. Oh good, Jomi. Thanks for topping by. Thanks for helping us hit 10. It was good. It was good. I haven't seen that one. That sounds pretty good though. He has pretty good videos. For some reason, they don't get recommended to me that frequently. Like, I have to look them up. <laughs> yeah, I almost don't even want... Yeah, exactly. I don't want to read the documentation. I just want to... Uh, copy paste their example code into mine and just use it. I <laughs> like how when Jomi let the viewer count reduce to four, so six. Dang, that means Jomi was four of our users. Jomi, Jomi counts for four. Jomi's equal four people. That's his, that's his worth. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. What are we doing? Oh yeah, we wanna log the, we wanna log, log the users out if the proxy starts. And then I was thinking, I, I'm kind of in a unique case where I only, yeah, Jomi's a big boy. I'm in a unique case where I only have uh, one proxy, but eventually I might have multiple. So what I would probably want to do is I want to track each user based off of which proxy they're through. And then if a proxy disconnects, I do need to detect that now and log those people out. Um, I'm kind of tempted to just like make the underlying assumption that there's only going to be one proxy, but I've, I'm worried if I make that assumption, then uh, changing it's going to be really hard. <coughs> so I kind of don't want to make the assumption, but... At the same time, I'm kind of lazy. Let's look. Let's just look at how hard this is going to be. How do sockets reconnect? I'm surprised I'm not getting errors when the proxy goes. Actually, why would the why would this have errors? Because I think this socket will just send messages to whatever connects to it. You know? Can I launch multiple? Oh, did I close my terminal? That's not good. Did I really? Oh no, I didn't. That's where it doesn't show up. I'm curious what happens if I run multiple proxies. Yeah, address already in use. Oh, oh, that's for the listener. Let me get a proxy here. This one will be at port 8001. Hmm, kind of weird. I wonder what happens here if I do this now. So we have a proxy at 8000, we have a server, proxy at 8000. If I launch another client, but this client connects to the second proxy, what's gonna happen? 
That is weird. So everything, like he connected, like he dialed it and it seemed like it worked. <clears throat> like the proxy dialed, it seems like it works. Like there's no errors, but then uh, like logically it doesn't make sense because I'm, I only have one socket object on my server. I might need to use a different, instead of using pair, I might need to use, need to use something different. Like I need to, I need to have um, something that creates multiple. Let's give this, give this a full screen treatment. I just want to look at, I don't want to necessarily add multiple proxies or the ability to have multiple proxies, but I do want to just, um, I do want to just look through the different options. I think there's just like, there's like a full, I remember reading this, uh, like nano message documentation. Here we go. I think, yeah, this is it. That's what Mangos is based off of nano message <clears throat> pair, simple one-to-one -one communication. It's just weird that it wouldn't throw an error somewhere. Like it wouldn't be like, Oh, you couldn't connect. I wonder what happens if, I don't know. Hmm. That's weird. Plus simple many to many communication, rec rep, allows to build clusters of stateless services to process user requests. Request, reply, I assume. Hub sub distributes messages to large sets of inter interested subscribers. Pipeline aggregates. So either I have a bunch of pairs. It's weird because I almost want to have something that listens but spawns off pairs. I guess that's technically um, <clears throat> probably pub sub. Like for example, probably what it's going to be is it's probably going to be like uh, publish a message to this proxy and then everybody's listening. Uh, as, as the NNG, what is NNG? Nano message next gen, oh geez. Lightweight messaging library. <clears throat> what language is this? I guess it's C, there we go. C and a little bit of C++. Um, I don't think I need to look into that right now. One way pipe. I wonder if it's single, uh, if this is single producer. Hub sub. Yeah, I think I kind of want this. The problem I think here is that, how does this work? I'm gonna look at uh, uh, examples. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> I wish it was easy to get to the uh, repo from here. I know there's a link somewhere. GitHub, GitHub, there we go. Oh, they have WebSockets. That's kind of cool. I wonder if I should use WebSockets, if I should use nano message WebSockets. I mean, I'd have to use a pair socket, so. Oh, <clears throat> so you can set these options, I guess. I guess that's how you would have it. Uh, pair new socket, node one. What is this, what does main do? Main, node zero, node one. Node zero listens, node one dials, and they just send receive. Oops. Is the time until the next receive times out? The value is a time duration. Zero value may be passed to indicate that no timeout should be applied. A negative value indicates a non-blocking operation. By default, there is no timeout. Yeah, so these, I think this is how I'd customize the, uh, like customize the socket. Retry time, interesting. I'll probably have to think about this more. But for now, I think I'm just gonna go with the assumption that um, I, might I might try to couple the list of users logged in with the actual socket connection. I just don't know how I'm going to detect if the, uh, I, I guess that's what I need to figure out. I need to detect how the, um, if this, if the uh, connection timed out or if the connection closed. But I feel like, I feel like that gets me in a situation where let's say the proxy goes down for like just a second. Um, it disconnects. I, um, I guess I log everybody. If I log everybody out, then it's always going to be fresh, right? I was thinking what happens if, um, I don't know if this case will happen. I guess this case wouldn't happen. Oh, so you might not know, like if it's a ungraceful closure, you might, you have to have a timeout, right? To detect that it closed. So what you could have is you have an ungraceful closure on the proxy. Then you have like a 30 second, I guess maybe you do a really low timeout or something like that. Well, I guess I, the, little, there's a little bit of a race condition because the proxy could restart before the server detects that the proxy ever went down. And then, then someone logs in again, they get associated with the server. I guess if the server restarts though, if the server restarts, then... Or sorry, if the proxy restarts, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. I need to draw this. Oh, I have two columns, I guess. That's where my terminal is, is down there. Um, hmm. So you have a server, you have a proxy. The proxy goes down, but the server still thinks the proxy's up. And then the proxy restarts. Now the server is associated. Um, now the server is associated the wrong group of users. Because the server has a list of users. And he still thinks the users are active. And then he still thinks, he thinks the users are all, he thinks like, oh, he doesn't realize it's a new proxy. So when one proxy goes down, I need to, hmm. Like I almost need to know if, if it's the original proxy or if it's a different proxy or if it's a restarting of the same proxy, you know? So I can't use IP address really. Let me, let me make some coffee. Think about this. I'll be right back. So I was, I was starting to think about like, let me get my drawing tablet out. I'm gonna try Krita though. I need to clean my desk. Let me do try new drawing apps, boys. I'm gonna draw this. See, like people clearly draw nice stuff in this thing, you know? I might have, I wonder if I tried to configure this and I messed it up. 
fully resolution. I feel like it still does that thing, or it does like that jaggedy. Okay, that's pretty smooth. But I don't want, I guess I don't want pressure, whatever. How do I bucket this? Um, pen? Oh, oh boy, that's a big one. Oh, brush. All right, let's see. Yep, I still suck. Um, oh, I was thinking of it, I, think, I was thinking about it like this. That's the server, that's the proxy. They're connected to each other. <clears throat> But the server could also be connected to another proxy, theoretically. I don't want to like, um, I don't want to, I don't want to not make that assumption, you know. But then you have to think about. I think, I think this is how I'm going to think about it. I think uh, you have to think about who knows what at what times and like what people's data looks like. So the proxy knows about like users, users that are logged into himself. So he has this like user map. We have like U1, which is this connection. Like that's specifically what uh, U2 which is this connection, um, and then proxy, this is proxy one, this is proxy two, U, he's got like U3, because these are different user IDs, you know, U4, like that's like what the, that's what the connection world looks like, I think. So then the server, I think to properly capture this state, and the server needs to have a map, and what I have now is I have, uh, what do I have? I have like user, so I have, I have, right now I have this, let me draw it down here. Like, because I only have one proxy, what I basically have, like, let's say I'm just connected to proxy one. I have U1, um, which is like an ID, and then he has an ID. U, oop, I, I always do that. U2, and he has an ID. But what I think I need, I think I need this. I need, I need this, but for all proxies. I need proxy. Let's make this that. For that, I want uh, this. I want, like, proxy one. It's kind of like a tree. I want proxy one, 2.2. Um, <clears throat> well, what do I need actually? Cause like what's going to happen is I'm going to receive a message from proxy one. Like there's two cases. I receive a message from proxy one that says, Hey, user one's input is this. So I need a way to look up user one's ID, which is what this maps for. Then I need to do the inverse. The server needs to send a message to user one. So he needs to know what proxy user one's logged into. So he has to go and, um, look up the proxy. So I need, I don't remember, do I send? Messages to users or to proxy to uh sorry to users or to entity IDs. I need to look. Um, let's see here. Serve proxy connection. This is for reading data. Wait, what is this? User ID. Yeah, login map. Let's look at that where that gets used. <clears throat> oh, that's only used here. Where do I? How does pro, uh, server send update? Update user ID. Oh, because I basically build the world update. Let me let me add documentation here. Um, so we basically create the world update. We add relevant data to the world update, and then we send it to all the users. And then uh, here is where we specify what user we want to send it to. But then we can basically say, oh, uh, we're going to send this to the proxy, which is always this because we only have one proxy. But now that we're introducing the concept of there might be two, and like uh, we have to introduce the concept that there might be two, even though we only have one, because what can happen is. Uh, this guy can crash, uh, and then we and then we like switch over to a new one uh, immediately. You know, so we need to have a way to reassociate that stuff. <clears throat> so so like if I think what I need to do is instead of having this proxy idea, I don't think I really want that. I think I want this, and this is really like this is like the proxy. It's like some connection or something like that. You know, so you you find you find the user ID that you are. Um, is that what I do? The login map. Yeah. So this needs to be held somewhere more central, um, and it also needs to capture the different proxies. So I'll also, I'll have some object that has ECS ID. It also has like the proxy. It's kind of weird though, because what's going to happen is, yeah, I guess I don't really know how. Like I think if I do the uh, looking back at this documentation, I think if I do like pub sub, which I think is the closest to what I'm trying to do, they have a server and I have a bunch of clients. That's very similar to what I'm doing. It's almost like I need some. Uh, like I think the server still handles one thing. He just like, uh, uh, what does he? How does he determine who it sends to? Like, how do you know who's subscribed to what? Excuse me. Client name. Set options. Option subscribe. Oh, empty byte array effectively subscribes to everything. Well, that's not a very good example. So like, does the server? How does the server tag what he's sending? That's what I need to know. Like, we subscribe to everything on the client. What's name for it then? Hmm. Mango's option subscribe. Sock send a byte of the date. Yeah, I just feel I feel like there should be some like oh oh I want to set set the server. I guess that's probably some option. What do they call this? Option subscribe. 
All right, let's go through these, I guess. I think we just have to. I guess we have to read the docs. What does Linger do? We're not trying to wait for send queues to drain while close is called. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of options. Okay. Receive deadline. Send deadline. Retry time. Okay, subscribe. Option subscribe. Option unsubscribe. Okay. I know, not the docs. Sub x sub. The arguments is a byte. The application will receive messages that start with this prefix. Multiple subscriptions. Oh, that's how they filter. Maybe an effect on a given socket. The application will not receive messages that do not match a, any current subscriptions. If there are no subscriptions from a sub x sub socket, then the application will not receive any message. Empty prefix can also be used to subscribe to all messages. I see. I'm trying to think, like I almost, I almost just want a regular TCP socket. Like I don't know. I feel like things are getting too complicated with Mangos because it's forcing me to use this like publish subscribe thing, which is maybe, uh, which I probably don't really need. I don't know. Because you don't pub like when you publish, you need to specify, you need to prefix the message with like some string of bytes now, just to make sure it gets filtered properly by the receiver. <clears throat> but what I really want is I just want two different sockets. Like I want two different pairs. But like I don't see a way in the pair example. I guess I can do a raw socket. This is probably the closest to what I want. Like it probably has a listener. Um, listen. Oh no, it doesn't. Like, I guess I don't know how to, uh, hmm. Simple one-to-one -one communication, simple many-to-many -many communication, request reply, allows to build clusters of stateless services process. I don't want that. Maybe I want a bus, the bus example. Let's see here. Actually, I definitely don't want a bus, right? Because a bus is probably like, um, everybody gets everything, which is not what I want. <clears throat> oh, pipeline, I agree with messages from multiple sources and load balance them among many destinations. That's probably, that would, that would probably be very useful. Hmm. Let me go get my coffee. I'll be right back. Unit is reading code live. Yes, I am. I'm starting to think that this is, uh, like, I'm starting to question why did I even use this in the first place? Because I want to have, like, it's frustrating because I want to have multiple pairs. But if I just want multiple pairs, then, like, why don't I just use a TCP server? You know what I mean? And, like, have the server and have the server have multiple connections. I guess in the future, let's just, like, let's do a little planning. Change our color. This, one's, this one doesn't have enough contrast. Ooh, that's a nice blue that i enjoy like trying to use this but i feel like it doesn't look that good because there's this like pressure sensitivity oh at a brush settings oh wow that's a lot of settings it looks a lot smoother though <laughs> i think smaller could be good maybe we'll cut it in half why do they not have pressure oh scratch pad that's interesting that's pretty good let's just leave that that's fine is it safe it did not oh no it did looks good well now i kind of want it to be a little bit bigger 20 ish okay looks really complicated yeah i mean it's uh I think it's kind of complicated. I don't know. There's a lot of, uh, the problem, this is the hard part about distributed computing is like, there's a lot of states that a lot of things can be in. And it's not, there's not like a really good way to model it, you know? Cause like how many of these are running? How, what's wrong? Like, did these just load or have they loaded? How synchronized are they? Stuff like that. I don't even remember what I was trying to do now that I was playing with uh, brush settings. Oh, oh, I was trying to plan. Like what's the long term? Like what would the long term be? I think the long term is going to be something holy that's tiny. The long term... I think logically, super long term, you probably would do something like this. You have like your map and you have, um, you can change the size. Oh yeah, there you go. I know. I'm, uh, this is the first time I've used this. So I'm, uh, thanks for finding that for me. But I like, I like the size now. I also want to like, I don't know how to change the uh, pressure, but when I have a low pressure, it makes it smaller and it makes it more opaque. I don't really want that. But I guess when you're drawing, you probably do want that. So you have these regions. You probably have regions and you probably want to map those to computers. I'm gonna call it region one, two, three, four. This is gonna have like one and two. Maybe this is a really populated region that's got three. And this is a populated region that's got four. And then uh, likely these all need to talk to each other, like all of the regions do. All of the neighboring regions probably need to talk to each other. So you probably need a connection to every neighboring region. So in here, it'll probably be a like uh, some IPC or maybe some like shared memory thread thing. Probably, yeah, it's probably easier to do the shared memory thread thing here, even though it's like a little bit different. Most of the time, we'll probably have regions in the same computer, so. Um, though I guess, if you did separate the processes, then um, if one region crashes, the other ones wouldn't crash, so there's maybe a little bit better availability there. Anyways, so you have these. So these are in like a, um, like you'd probably use a nano message for the communication between those. Would you? The problem with pub sub, I think, is that um, allows to query the state of multiple applications in a single go. I think the problem with pub sub is that everybody listens for it. 
I need to go look at the pub sub again. It, it's hard. It's hard to understand how these are implemented behind the scenes. Like, uh, I guess you have a server. These guys all dial, right? So they all dial the URL. Oh, so I can just publish to all of the subscribers. So what you probably do in Krita is you probably have like, um, you probably set up like some pub sub where there's no like filtering of messages, but basically like one publishes to two, three, four. So they all dial him and he's a published server. Two publishes to one, three, four, right, etc. You probably do that. Then I'm trying to think, is there anything else I would need there? Because you need some inner, like, because uh, if some entity crosses a boundary, he probably needs to be transferred to the other server. So there needs to be some sort of like knowledge of where entities are, if they're about to cross boundaries, who owns the entity, things like that. Then, um, hmm, I don't think there's anything else you'd need to do. You might need like, um, you might need like general RPCs, because if you have like some other one over here, which is like 15, let's say there's a teleportation to 15. He might need to be like, hey, by the way, like he doesn't need data from him very frequently, but every in, every once in a while he needs to, um, every once in a while he needs to like say like, hey, this is something, I don't know. I guess this is like rec press. I'm just trying to see how like the scalability protocols would fit in and where they would fit in. And then these are the game servers. Now you have a bunch of proxies and how I imagine those is like this. These just have like random connections to clients, right? I don't know how this connection would work though. <laughs> What I was thinking is that every game server, well, right now, if you have one game server, then every proxy would need to connect to that. But if you have multiple game servers, then do you have like regional proxies? Hmm. Like, would you say these are the proxies for like region one and two? And if you're in region one, no, because then if you, you have to have, I think you have to have proxies. Uh, I just feel like, I feel like there's some optimization opportunity, but it's, I feel like it's really hard to get, like, it would be really hard to have the user switch proxies, I think. Would that be hard? Like if you had proxies that were on region one and two and the client is on this one, I feel like there would definitely be a hiccup, but maybe you could do like big chunks so they don't do it very frequently. But inside that big chunk, I think it's the general case still. Like there might be some optimization opportunity to say like, oh, these ones only connect here, you know? Or like, uh, sorry, I'm going back to my pen. Like you could say like these ones only connect here. These are like region one and two proxies. Um, but then inside of that, now you have, a, you have a group of proxies that need to connect to multiple servers. So like, just let's just solve the general case. And then if we want to optimize on top of that, I think that that's doable. I think every game server needs to talk to every proxy because you don't know who's logged in where. If you want to send a message to some user, you have to send it to their proxy. So you, maybe you do pubs up here. You say every single one of these publishes to uh, all of the proxies and then the proxies determine, do they want to use that message or not? If they don't have that user, then they just uh, throw the message away. I feel like that's not very optimal though, right? Because you're sending a message to everybody. You're sending a message to everybody, but you know which, but you could track which, where that user is. Huh. Like here is, how, like I was determining how to track where the user's logged in at. But if I didn't want to track that, I could use PubSub and then the proxies could figure it out. But now I'm spamming, like I'm spamming this message to like literally everybody. Because how, how PubSub works is they send the message to everybody. And that's useful for this interaction because everybody literally needs to get it. But I mean, maybe because if you only like, you might not need to send the whole update here. Oops. I always put down my pen. Like you might have these like smaller regions and that's what you send the updates for. So you might have like individual connections for each of these. I feel like it's just adding up to be a lot of connections. It's like, what's better sending the message to everybody or because you don't necessarily like if you published someone who's up here to all of your neighbors, and that's going to go to like three, but three probably doesn't need, really need to know it. I guess it's not the end of the world if he does, but it's just, uh, it's unnecessary. And the other thing is you like, you want to prioritize the sending of these guys to these guys have rooms. What do you mean? Oh, like uh, dungeons and stuff. Or do you mean like, uh, uh, like sharded servers? Like if every user could have what chunk he is. Yeah. So I know what chunk they are based off of the position that the user is associated in the world. And I thought about somehow encapsulating that in the ID. I haven't figured that out yet, but you would send user filter empty chunk update. Oh, you're talking about the the opposite direction. Like these need to respond back somehow. I came back and someone gave me a quick recap. Oh boy, this might be this might be three oh boys worthy. I'm I'm trying to figure out how to uh, how to organize like the socketing, how to organize all the connections. Like it, kind of like you have these. Uh, it's kind of hard to see now, but like if you imagine you oops. 
I'm gonna draw these with thick lines. You imagine these are like different regions of your game world. One, two, three, four, right? Um, those might get mapped to different computers. These are like game servers. So like region one, two got mapped to this game server. Region three got mapped to this game server. Region four got mapped to this game server. Um, game servers need to communicate to each other. So they need to have sockets open up. Like two needs to talk to four to send updates to say like, oh, hey, there's an entity right here. He's about to pass the boundary and you're gonna start managing him in the future. That's one thing. Um, that is one thing. Thing two. Thing two is um, I was thinking of using pub sub for that, but uh, that makes it that makes weird situations like here where I'm sending this guy over to three because I'm publishing from two to like one two and three or one three and four. Sorry, like he's gonna get everything. So like it's less optimal. It'd be more optimal to just send the necessary data over based off the server. So I think every game server needs to have uh, a a like listener that listens for connections of neighboring game servers and i don't think pub subs the necessarily the right thing to do here um and, th and then i was thinking then the next thing's proxies so the one problem is sending uh figuring out which proxy a user's on so the server does track that so uh we could figure out which one to send it to and that's fine i might have a project that does that kind of only problem is that it uses java what's it called is that the minecraft one yeah i think i saw that one yeah this is a, this is like a uh somewhat common sort of thing people are doing like spatial os does it so then we can we can find out which proxy they're on pretty easily because we track we can track that on the server and then when the user updates over here we need to look at which proxy or we need to copy over their prod their proxy as well that's kind of a future problem because we're only going to have one right now i just want to make sure that it'll fit in the future that i'm picking the right types of sockets here like i think the right way to do it is just have like tcp servers like i don't really see the point of using mangos anymore because i almost uh like maybe I use pub sub here or yeah, yeah, no, because that's, does the same thing. I don't need to send the message to everybody. I just need to send it to one. Um, and then sending back that that's what Dracula was talking about. So you'd send my chunk update. That's what you mean there. So I think we figured out everything up to here, but now the client needs to send something back to the game server. So he sends a message to his proxy. Um, his proxy needs to know what region he's on because we can't, well, we, and we could determine that based off of, uh, we can determine that based on what? We can, we can track everybody's position and determine what region they're on there. That's not too hard. The problem is if you're a proxy that didn't get that message, that, that didn't track that, how would you know? Hmm. Like you just logged in. I guess the first thing back through the proxy is going to be your position, right? Like that's the most common message that gets sent. I think that that's good enough. So the proxy will have the position, which gives him a way to determine which game server he's on. Uh, there does need to be some mapping, some like table that says, cause he finds the region, you know, uh, this is bad. I'm gonna put it here. That says like one goes to, uh, oh, oh, I'm gonna call this A. I'm gonna call this B, call that C. One goes to A, two goes to A, three goes to B, four goes to C. When you start having to draw stuff to implement, get an idea on how to implement something, that's the point where <laughs> my head started to die. Yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. I gotta. Th I just gotta think this through. Cause I don't like. I feel like what I've come to the conclusion of though is that like I could just manage this without using Mangos. I don't really know why. I guess if you have if you have one computer that needs that literally needs to send the same update to a lot of things, maybe you can use PubSub. If you have one computer that needs to connect to one computer only, you can use a pair. But like, I feel like what's the point of, and maybe like I'm just being a little naive. I like, I, don't, I just don't see the point of sending an update to every single proxy computer uh, when I know which one I need to send it to. I don't know, like, I'm trying to think of a situation where I would have that. Like, I think if you track stuff well enough, I sent the MC thing in Discord, if you wanna see it again for some reason, I think they have a graph diagram on their side or something like that. Yeah, let me look, let me take a gander. I remember I, remember I saw it, uh, it was on Reddit one day. Make bullshit, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Multi-paper? Oh, wow, 325. How chunking works. When a server reads a chunk, it asks the master to load the chunk from a region file. So they statically determine the regions, I bet. So that's where I was thinking, like, um, in my diagram, you can, like, you could statically determine this based off of your layout. But then if you want to, like, scale out uh, and add more regions and split it, now this needs to be dynamically loaded from, like, a database or something like that. So it makes it a lot more complicated. Um, but, yeah. So it's probably easier to make it static. I will, I'm definitely going to keep it static, at least at the start. 
If another server has ownership of the chunk, the master will notify the server because the chunk from the server instead, so that it gets the most up-to-date copy. That makes sense. Oh, it asks the master to load the chunk from a region file. Oh, that's what they mean by region file. Because chunk is a Minecraft term, I think. Works like a CDN. Each server caches chunks that are needed by its player serving. Multi-paper. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder, I wonder if they had to do anything with... Uh, they, they must have had to modify Minecraft, right? To work. TCP tick duration, like bungee cord or velocity. Is it only for Minecraft? A server happens to scale a single world across multiple servers. Multiple paper, multi-paper servers run the same world. Recording each other and store server data while the multi-paper master is usually run as a standalone server. It can also be run as a bungee cord or velocity plugin, which has some benefits being able to send players to the least busiest server when they join. It's kind of interesting. So I would put them in a different region then. We'll instead request to master to take the ownership of it. If ownership is granted, the chunk will be executed, ticked on the next tick. If ownership is denied, since another owner, since another server owns it, the server will keep the chunk in sync with that server. It's confusing when they say server so many different times and they mean different things, I think. The server will keep the chunk in sync with that server. I don't know if that means the same thing. A chunk may be loaded on a server, but have no owner since it's outside the simulation distance. This is since the chunk won't be ticked by any server. So I guess that's if, like, there's literally no players in there. Oh, 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 because Minecraft's an infinite world, I see. So they, they simulate everything. Uh, maybe they don't, I don't know. I wonder if they simulate everything, regardless of what the players are in it. When a server has a chunk loaded in memory, it will subscribe to any changes made within that chunk. This means any server changes a block inside the chunk, it will be updated on all servers subscribed to that chunk. Oh, that's actually interesting. That makes me think, kind of. I wonder if... <clears throat> Can I make a new one? I don't want to lose the old one, though. I want like a new tab. Aha, it did work. This is a nice app. I like this. That makes me think um, I could do the pub sub thing. Like uh, before I was saying that I would waste bandwidth, you know, you can make layers. Yeah, layers would make sense, especially for things like um, things that are orthogonal to like, oh, oh, oh. I thought you were talking about uh, layers in the game world, like things that are regionally orthogonal, like ortho orthogonal to the uh, regions that like, like, Position matters for like physics systems, you know, but like chat might not matter as much. So you might have like another layer of this sort of concept. Like this should all, I guess all of this should be captured in, a, in like a layering concept. I'm kind of like assuming there's only one layer. Yeah, I guess the, probably the thing I should have done was make a layer, but whatever. <clears throat> uh, oh, but I was thinking I could do the pub sub thing about game world. You sound like an insane man lit rambling. Well, like, I guess like think about layers, right? You have like uh I'm going to draw, look at this 3D perspective. Oof. Right, you have some layers. You might have like physics layers. And that's like for collisions. And that's very regional dependent, you know? So like the physics one might look something like this. Where you want to break it up into really tight chunks, you know? But then you have like chat. This is kind of an aside, but chat's like uh, maybe you need less chunks, right? There's a lot less data. And you want it to be bigger. Like you want the regions to be bigger. Like you, like you want messages from people further away potentially or something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> but most things are pretty spatial i think so yeah like it's about like uh, i think it's all comes down to like how you optimize stuff like this sort of stuff but like you can make this as complicated as you want it probably i'm trying to I, like i feel like i had an idea for a better like at one point i had a reason there was that you could have multiple layers but i don't remember what it was right like like let's say let's say you wanted a global chat you know so what do you do if you do it in this if like you do it in the same chunking mechanism as like physics and what happens now is now um, this server needs to send those updates to this server. So he has to like literally forward. It, it, I guess it gets kind of confusing because he's forwarding only chat messages to this one server. So he's got to have a socket with him, you know. Um, but if you have if you have if you have chat as like just a different thing, like a different layer, like it's completely uh, isolated from this logic. It, it could be on a completely different computer, you know, like this could be computer like seven. This is like, uh, maybe these are all one, these are all two, seven, eight, nine. So now the player's kind of like on multiple servers, I guess. I don't know, I'm kind of spitballing here a little bit. Maybe that's a bad idea. I feel like it would be really confusing if the player's on multiple servers. It, they're on multiple servers insofar as like uh, certain messages and certain updates are concerned. Like when they send a message, we would look on a different layer for the different region mapping for stuff like that, you know? But like these literally could never communicate. So you kind of lock yourself into that. But oh, the pub sub thing. I think that's doable. Let me redraw this. I just have to redraw this bigger. We have one, we have two, we have three, we have four. 
go a different color, nice orange. Um, like let's let's break up this one into four. So you could have like if you broke if you broke this into chunks, now you could say like, oh, I could do pub sub all of these directions now because this is relevant to all of those, you know. So now you have like one bottom left or like you know what I mean. Like you're subscribed to that, and then this one would send here, there, and there. I guess you could do pub sub that direction, like that way. That actually might be easier to manage than the way I had it planned. But I don't know. That kind of makes it. I feel like it locks you in too much. Like, cause if you did have something that was, I don't know. I'm trying to think. the th The thing is, is it's it's about like what update you want to send to everybody. Like, if I do pub sub, I have to send the same update to everybody. But if I have individual sockets, now I don't have to do that. I can send an individualized message to each person. So but the thing about PubSub is I have to send the same message, and that's the big difference. So if I chunk it up like this, maybe you can send the same message and it, and it makes sense, you know? Because you have four, you're just basically saying, I'm going to only have four different messages. Um, but I could do the same thing with TCP sockets, uh, but I can also do more. I could make things much more optimized, like, oh, I only send like, like, oh, I know two knows about this stuff, so I can only send him this stuff, you know? I think I'm going to, I think I'm not going to do PubSub. I think I'm going to stop using Mangos, because I don't really see a um, super good reason for it yet but i think once i change this it's going to break some of the uh some of the logic that i have i don't think mangos is bad i think it's just like um i think it just forces you into a certain pattern why this reminds me of my joke about using mysql as an ecs <laughs> yeah i don't know that's actually a good i don't know that's that's pretty true though like this is kind of what happens like uh i think this is common though like i don't i didn't really understand the problem when i very first started so i was like oh like uh, these are scalable i don't know where it is now these are like uh so several common communication like these are distributed networking passwords or uh distributed networking uh patterns that people use so it was like this seems like a pretty easy thing to do and I, I, actually mangoes is like really easy to use right i don't have to like worry about anything connections reconnections anything like that but now that i'm kind of getting into like what it's going to look like i think that it has to um i think it has to kind of be this way if i want to optimize stuff in the way that i want to optimize stuff but I think this is just like the nature of doing software. Like you don't really understand it until you build it. And then you build it once you're like, oh, now I see like where the bottlenecks are and stuff like that. Almost 10. Uh Oh, we're getting close. Yeah. I think it was good to plan out though. Cause I think if I just kept, um, if I just kept like developing on top of this, I would get like really confused. I should save these pictures. Reminds me about fiber, fast HTTP stuff. Never trust a project that randomly says fast blazingly. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the problem is like, I didn't understand the reason why people would use these until now. Like I was like, oh, this handles like 99, this I was like, I just kind of thought this probably handles like 99% of like the communication patterns I would need to do. And I think it's like pretty well made. And I think there's tons of, I think tons of people use nano message. Like nano message is what about blazingly fast? Yeah. I mean, I could probably still use uh, this, but just do, um, I just don't know what the point of using this would be over TCP if, uh, if I'm just gonna use a raw socket, <laughs> slash blazingly. What about blazingly fast? Yeah, my SQL is my go-to database since the rest costs money. Yeah, databases are hard to pick. Where'd this go? Please don't download something. A lot of different ones, but I think this is for very specific messaging patterns. I don't think this is for uh, necessarily what I'm doing. I'm doing like a very niche thing, I think. But I kind of wonder if I'm. I wonder if like the way I'm doing it's gonna be too complicated, and that I'll be able to like regret my decision later. I don't think so. Actually, I always regret my decisions, so, you know, there's just, uh, there's no, there's no, um, there's no preventing it. I wish I could move this to, actually, I don't need this one. This one I kind of want, though. Yes, exactly. Regret is a lesson learned. I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Hmm. Well, I think this is good. Um, I think we got a plan. Let me save this. I don't need this anymore. Actually, no. Why did I click save? Discard. I'll save it later. I don't know where I want to put it yet. I need a place to like organize stuff. If I save it, I don't know, I just like put it on my desktop or something. But it is almost 10. So I think we're at, we're at a natural stopping point here. Notion. I have heard of Notion. I have never used it before. Is Notion free? One workspace, every team. Never ask what's the context again. Still, wikis aren't helpful. Neither are floating dots. In Notion, your daily work and knowledge live side by side so you never lose context. But what about when this goes out of date? I thought about doing, because uh, I have a little blog, I thought about putting like a short form thing, you know, like a short form section, which just had like little things like this, where I designed like a little thing and then just like put it there with a little text write up. Because I'm like, I'm never going to go back and edit this. Also, this would be really freaking hard to look at. I just thought it would be cool. Yeah, I thought it'd be cool to have like, uh, oh, here's like some little thing I worked on. 
but then like take like five minutes to, to write it up. And then it's easy to go back and like look at, oh, like how did I do this thing I did one time? Hey, Denik, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. I feel bad because uh, we're just about over, but, but I stream Tuesday, Thursdays. So Tuesday, Thursdays early in the bright and early if you want to come back. But yeah, I thought it'd be cool to have, what time is it in my, I'm East, East Coast in the US. This is why I design stuff before code. Yeah, I, um, it's PST 7 a.m. here. Oh boy, sorry. Yeah. I'll have to stream. I'll have to stream late one day just for you. I feel like it's good to code. I feel like sometimes I don't know how to design it, so I'll like experiment a lot, and then I'll design it. So I feel like there is some value in like coding something out before you start trying to design it. Like I never would have come up with this stuff if I hadn't already coded it and like seen some of the flaws with how my original implementation was. Acceladraw. Ooh, hand drawn look and feel. Acceladraw plus whiteboarding tool with hand drawn experience. Oh, this was uh, <laughs> this is what JJ sent. That's true. I even bookmarked this. Look at that. I'm so dumb. There's a plugin for Obsidian. What's Obsidian? Oh, that's not going to help. Oh, is this it? Obsidian is a power on. Interesting. I like how I Google Obsidian and uh, the very first thing that pops up is this one. Not like, oh, this is Obsidian, the form of rock. What is it though? Obsidian is a powerful knowledge base on top of a local folder of plain text markdown files. It's a markdown note application. Oh, interesting. I don't give the app of a year awards, but I would 100% give it to Obsidian for slowly taking over almost everything that has to do with text files. Oh, nice. Connections frictionless. Tend to your notes like a gardener. At the end of the day, sit back and marvel at your own knowledge graph. That's actually pretty interesting. Is it like a, is it like a UI app? Oh, I guess it is. Oh, interesting. You probably really have to take care of stuff, though, to get this kind of level of like organization. Nice. Dark mode. A necessity. Oh, hmm. Notes for your grandchildren. I like that. I put my notes in a GitHub repository, <laughs> so it's technically still on my uh, thing. I'll look into this. I'll look into it more. Thanks for the link. Yes, Kanban plugins, tags, Acceladraw, and a bunch of other amazing features. Been using it for a year. My notes have built up. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Like, I do want it to, like, I do kind of want it to uh, host, though. Or, sorry. I do want to, like, host it, too. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be cool to ho host it to, like, my blog. Like, that's kind of what I thought about doing, like, updating my notes so they're a little bit more, like, cleaner. I do like the idea, though. <laughs> I wonder if there's a, um, I'll look into it more. I wonder if there's a way to do that though. That might be kind of nice. I wrote a web app to do that. Nice. Oh, link it in, or are you in our Discord? I don't think you can link here on YouTube because they'll block you, but there's just very frequent times where like I'll do something and I'll be like, how did I do that? Or like, why did I do that? And I won't be able to figure it out. Or like I'll eventually figure it out, but it'd be nice to, I do cybersecurity and CTFs. So I use it for write-ups and notes and blocks. Nice. I like, I like Obsidian because I don't have to make an account. It'll just work. Hmm. I'm just gonna save this on my desktop. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it for today. We gotta drop off now. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. It was fun. We hit 10 concurrent viewers today. Massive achievement. Great accomplishment. It's a nice plugin in API and community. That's where things start to get more advanced. Yeah, I believe it. I think I think I like I like little things like this because I think it's a good idea. And I uh, it seems like they've got they're really popular. Six thousand members, sixty thousand members in their Discord chat, and thirty five thousand members on their forum. That's like, that's massive. No, but I'll, I'll definitely check it out because I've been looking for something to do or something to use to do, do that. So, but anyways, open so exactly. Open source prevails once again. I don't think there's any software that I use anymore that's closed source, except for like Rocket League. But, you know, I can't, I can't blame them for that. Anyways, all right, I'll see you guys later. You guys have a good one.